Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly episode 140. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and working experiences from the week. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jay, you put out three videos a week. How could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, Games Workshop came out with an entire gaggle of brand new miniatures, and most of them were actually pretty shocking. It hasn't been that long since they previously released a whole bunch of stuff, and it felt like there was nothing really super pressing on the horizon. We kind of knew what was coming out for the codexes, the new codex releases for 40k, Age of Sigmar is where Age of Sigmar is, and probably getting revamped sometime next year, so it's hard to know what's going on with that. It was just kind of shocking what we actually got, and some of it was pretty cool. Starting off with the new kill team stuff, it's a little weird to get the new kill team stuff before being able to get your hands on the old new kill team stuff because it's it's not out yet and so we're just getting like double kill teamed. I do like getting kill team boxes that are just kill team in a box because the devil's boxes, although lovely and containing everything you need to actually play the game except for dice, they're really fun, but you'd get so much terrain at a certain point that you just don't need it. Like kill team doesn't actually use that much terrain. It's about a quarter of a 40k board of terrain to actually play a good game of Kill Team. So I have so many sets of Into the Dark terrain. So many. And uh, still actually have not gotten a single game of Into the Dark because we play a lot of open map and we play a lot with our custom terrain. So it just feels kind of bad to spend so much time on terrain and then be like, all right, we just finished our building our terrain. Now let's get out the GW terrain and get that all built. Because as much fun as terrain is, it's not miniatures. And I like to spend the majority of time actually painting miniatures. But speaking of miniatures, I built my legionary kill team as the Night Lords. I carefully kitbashed and converted them all. I put puppets war heads onto them. I made them all into perfect little Night Lords. And then Games Workshop came out with a Night Lords kill team. It'll be really interesting to see how Games Workshop makes these spa Chaos Space Marines different than the current Chaos Space Marines, Legionary versus Nemesis Claw. It is Chaos Space Marines, but not the old Chaos Space Marines, but built out of the exact same box as the old Chaos Space Marine kill team and using a lot of the same operatives. It's gonna have to come down to some really, really schnazzy rules, whether these guys are worth running as opposed to the current cast space Marines. It would have been kinda awesome, and I feel like a little bit kinda normal for Games Workshop to show off something like, you can take Havocs, or you can take the Jump Pack guys for the cast space Marines to make this kill team feel very different to the other kill team. Cause like the two plas, if I got this kill team, I would literally have two Chaos Space Marines holding plasma guns as the, the identical operatives for two different kill teams. <sighs> it's it's okay. I think it is neat. And Space Marines do get a few different kill teams, but arguably those kill teams are just, just a little bit different because some of them are the regular intercessors, some of them are the incursors and infiltrators slash reavers. And some of them are the are, are a mixture of everything with the easy to build um, or not easy to build, but uh, Space Marine Heroes series of Space Marine models. And of course, if you still care about the compendium, don't forget about the heavy intercessor team, potentially the worst kill team in the history of kill team. They have absolutely no activations, just all around an absolutely terrible, terrible kill team, but you can run it. You absolutely can run it in Kill Team. The rules work, not well, not good, you won't win, but Space Marines do get a lot of variety in their Kill Teams. Chaos Space Marines now have two Chaos Space Marine Kill Teams that are exactly the same. I'm surprised you can't even mix, seemingly you can't mix cultists into this Kill Team. I think some Night Lords cultists would be pretty darn awesome. I, it makes me wonder if Games Workshop really wanted to do some Night Lords stuff, but all of a sudden they're like, well, we can we can make this into a kill team because a kill team basically can be any 10, you know, ten, six to 10 um, Warhammer 40K models. And so this was models first and then it became a kill team or was it designed from the ground up to be a kill team, but to come out way after Legionaries came out? This is once again, the normal Chaos Space Marine box, but with an upgrade sprue. The article says it is a very big upgrade sprue, a full frame, which 
I don't necessarily see in the bodies of these space marines. We got a couple of interesting capes, interesting weapons, we got a banner that takes up a decent amount of room on a sprue, and a bunch of head swaps. But other than that, it doesn't seem like magically special. It doesn't seem like there's a wild amount of conversion going on. Some of these guys are really, really cool, and I do like the Batwing helmets. I'm sure they don't sell them anymore, but the old Forge World Batwing helmets were the helmet, like, the, the wings tripled the size of the helmet, although really, really fun. I do like the little bit more reasonably sized Batwing ears on these guys. I don't know, it's very interesting. I haven't seen in my Kill Team Facebook groups a lot of excitement about this new Kill Team release. And I'm hopeful that we get some interesting Kill Teams down the road that are just like, boom, Kill Team, try it out. Man, this one doesn't seem to have a lot of spice behind it. It's Legionaries. And if it's if you're me, it's literally the Legionaries you already put together and painted, because I like the Night Lords. They are neat. But speaking of Kill Team, a game that Games Workshop is maybe on the decline with, a game that Games Workshop was completely on the decline with because they killed it and then resurrected it from the dead, Old World got a Skeleton Boy. This skeleton on zombie, dinosaur, crocodile, cat thingy is pretty rad. I do like how classic Bones it is. Like, it is Egyptian. There is not a shred of flesh on this sucker, which seems perfect for the skeletons. If all the Tomb Kings end up looking this good, it will be slightly tempting. Because I liked the Tomb Kings. The Tomb Kings were actually the first... Warhammer thing I ever saw in my life because I was introduced to Warhammer from my cousin and he had a Tomb King's army for Warhammer Fantasy Battles. I didn't see them painted, but he had the Anubis Warriors, which looked super cool in lovely fine cast. And God, that would have been 2010 or 2011. So that would have been the worst fine cast possible because it would be, it'd be fresh. Right when Games Workshop made the transition of, look at how cool our new resin is. No more fiddling with that white metal. And it was awful. So many bubbles, so much warping, so many issues. But the Tomb Kings are kind of neat. And they do have a little touch of the nostalgia for me, remembering that army. This guy is super cool. I do like usually every single thing in Age of Sigmar. Every fancy person riding a fancy thing has a gigantic throne pulpit that they sit on, and it's almost always ridiculous. Like, it's okay just to have somebody riding a dragon or riding a monster and not have it be super incredibly ostentatious to where they have a house built on top of the creature. Usually it's a little much, but I feel like for the Tomb Kings, it actually works perfect because they're Egyptian, it looks like a chariot, there's no flesh to actually sit on when you're riding one of these horrible monsters, so it makes sense that they'd have to build a little something to actually ride on. The Tomb Kings are very ostentatious, so it makes a lot of sense that they would have they would need room for all of their decorations and their trophies. So for the Tomb Kings, I do like the gigantic throne saddle, but for most other things, just just have the guy sitting on the thing. I mean, the Orc Cruel Boys, they have a gigantic monstrosity of a saddle, and they're like evil swamp orcs. Like, they would just they would just hop on and ride. Like, they would not care to have something so ornate. But this guy is really, really cool. Boy, does he fill up that square base. He is hanging off on almost all the sides, which is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. I like when the miniature fits within the airspace of the base. It also just makes the game easier for when you're charging and getting into close combat. If you want to be within one inch for, for your assault range, then you need to actually like, basically get to base-to-base -to -base contact. But Although we always kind of just fudge it anyway, especially with models that are really, really obnoxious. But this guy is very cool, and it'll be really interesting to see what the rest of the army looks like. It does look silly. Like, it looks more fun and weird than I feel like the direction that a lot of Games Workshop miniatures have been moving into, which is somewhat more realistic without losing a ton of fun. And I think the perfect example of that is Games Workshop dropped an entire faction on us. 
The Flesh Eater Quartz. I have been complaining about these guys for quite a few weeks now as Games Workshop has been very slowly drip feeding us a few characters here and there. I don't think they're a proper army. They don't really seem to have what they need. So Games Workshop was just boom, here's everything. And I kind of love it. I really like all these new miniatures. I think they do a decent job of showing off the these guys think that they're aristocratic nobles, but actually they're just horrible ghouls. They definitely have horrible ghouls down pat. And I think with the sprinkling of special characters, it does sort of actually read as that's their lore. I think, though, for me, what's most fun in the reveal of the new ghouls is all the saggy boobies. There's a lot. I think one thing that the ghouls benefit actually over some other Age of Sigmar factions, or just kind of wargaming factions in general, is they do feel very, very uniform. I really like the vampires, but one thing I don't like about the vampires is there's also kind of wolves, and there's also kind of zombies, and there's also kind of skeletons. And those things aren't vampires to me. But every single thing in this army is a really gross dude on an equally gross monster. Like, these guys feel correct. They're almost like the Tyranids, where everything is made out of the same stuff. Everything is made out of either bluish grayish skin, or is the a horrible half-rotted monster corpse. Like, these guys feel correct. Like, if you're playing an RTS, and they have, you know, you have to understand the differences between the Terran and the Zerg, you can tell instantly and I feel like this is one of those factions where you can tell instantly what member is a part of this faction as opposed to something else. Their poses are super unique and flavorful and fun. They have guts and gore coming out of everywhere. I, I've been painting my vampires with like a very teal skin. I feel like teal skin would also kind of work with these guys. It'd be fun to have almost like a, a fun or cute colored skin with all of the gore and the horribleness. Although I also kind of like Games Workshop's just super pale green blue skin with ugh, with scabs and cuts and lesions. It's so monstrous. I think this army is actually looking pretty good. Games Workshop did a really good job of just taking what they needed to take, turning it into a faction, actually giving us the models that we need to have this really be an army. And they weren't even done showing off new stuff for this faction because we got the biggest boy, the return of Usheron. This guy is a plastic miniature and it looks as good, if not better than what Games Workshop was doing with the Forge World character series for 30K. This guy looks perfect. He's very Dark Soulsy. He's I feel like he's kind of a much more modern take on like big monstrous heroes or villains. I love the way his cloak kind of just flows down and then flows across the base. The base, even though it is a sculpted and detailed base, it actually is fairly subdued. I really appreciate that there's not like a, just a dead storm cast sitting on the steps of the stairs. His cloak looks amazing. The fur looks really good. His weird feathery hair sticking up in a mohawk across his back. I love that his jewelry is hanging off his emaciated wrists in a very realistic and believable way. Like usually when Games Workshop puts bandages or or bracelets on their characters, it's just a wrap of material. Like if you know, it's just in your sculpting program, you just you know boolean add a cylinder and then you just mush it down into shape. But this, it looks actually like sculpted. It looks really, really good. And it's a plastic miniature. Like compare this guy to the new bone skeleton for the Tomb Kings. Two different design philosophies for sure. This guy is incredible. Like the little, the sinewiness of his skin and the crunchiness of his bones that are exposed I'm sure is very uncomfortable and probably a little itchy like this guy just seems nasty and I really really like him I almost want whoever sculpted this to kind of revamp some of the other forge or the other Age of Sigmar heroes 
Ilariel the Everqueen. I really, really like that model, but I would I would take a take two from whoever sculpted this guy because this thing is amazing. And Ilariel, as cool as she is, now that I really look at her, she seems a little bit low poly compared to this guy. And I need her for my army. So Games Workshop, if you could get on it. One release that maybe was not so surprising, but was surprising that it actually took this long to get. 30k Assault Marines. I could see these guys being really, really popular for 40k, actually. Number one, they just look great. I do like the design of having their jump packs have kind of a, a harnessy armor patch in the front. I think that's kind of new because I think before they just fed into like a weird brick shaped like clip that actually clipped onto their backpacks. But I really like these guys and Assault Marines are excellent in 40k right now. They've a little bit removed the use of Terminators because Terminators can deep strike and kill stuff, but they're very expensive where the Assault Marines can deep strike and are very cheap. So Assault Marines are very good and presumably these guys are going to be sold in groups of 10. So for the price of 10 of these guys, you're essentially getting two squads of Assault Marines in one, which is really, really good. I think the Mark V armor looks great for jetpack guys. The pointiness of the helmet I mean, that's just good aerodynamics. I mean, the air is going to blow past their weird mousy nose really, really easily, as opposed to the big Darth Vader screaming mask of some of the other armor mark designs. I also get tons of really interesting weapons like the power fist, chain sword. You get a shield in there and the little shields have always been interesting. They don't grant you much ability, but the combat shields for Space Marines. But usually it used to be that everything could take a combat shield and you never, ever would because it was really expensive for like a five up or no, it was probably even it might have been like a six up invulnerable save. Just a little tiny something. You never make a six up save unless you're Sean. It never, ever happens. You're like, all right. 13 orcs died, but did they? Let's roll it. And then they all died. <laughs> you don't get, even though statistically you should get one, you don't get any. Uh, I like these guys a lot. I would be tempted to get these guys for my army as assault marines, but I'm still holding out. I think it still says on the Games Workshop web store that the just five plastic jump packs is, is temporarily out of stock. So if they ever come back in stock, I'm going to buy up so many of those and build so many regular assault intercessors with jump packs, although chances are Games Workshop never will because they don't need to because there's no use for those miniatures anymore. Like there's nothing that can be upgraded with a jump pack. So chances are that's just an oversight and they're going to remove it from the web store instead of restocking it. But if somehow, if somehow it gets all the way to manufacturing and they're like, oh, the job for today is to build a couple hundred thousand jump packs, I'm going to buy a couple. And speaking of buying a couple, or at least one, new Necron miniature, technically not new Necron miniature, but Oricon the Diviner. Oricon previously was a very divisive miniature, and arguably he didn't look like what the book The Infinite and the Divine describes, where he's like a weird little annoying wizard. He looked like Gollum from Lord of the Rings if he was a, a, a mecha anime character. <laughs> he looked very, very silly. And actually, the new one is a fairly faithful adaptation of the old model. But he does look a little bit more like he's floating than resting on his weird little tail. I really like all of his energy orbs. I like that he doesn't have like a little monkey face of with like pointy teeth. But now he's just got a regular just Necron grimace. I like his one glowing eye, his little Hellraiser puzzle cube, his staff of light, which is super big and shiny with the star motif going on and the chronomancer energy glowing in the center of it. This guy is super, super cool. It's just like they took the old miniature and they just inflated it in their design program and said, OK, this is the baseline. Let's see what can we add to make all of this stuff a little bit more interesting. Oh, one thing I really wish I could see, which I cannot see in this in their show off pictures is famously the back of Oricon's foot was completely flat and it looked weird because Necron feet are like segmented robotic pieces, but the back of his foot was just completely flat and literally pointing at the viewer because of his weird monkey golem pose. So I would like to see his feet. 
Although he does have a little bit of a canoptic cape going on, so maybe you can't see them in general. But I really, really like Oricon. But I'm kind of surprised to see Oricon and not Trazine. Because Trazine, Oricon's best friend and mortal enemy, is actually kind of an important character to 40k right now. He was at the fall of Terra. He keeps popping up in the lore. He apparently just has Creed somewhere. And it's weird that he's kind of a known entity in 40k. And we don't have a miniature for him. I guess he's still going to be old fine cast. I, I can't remember how many um, units they said were going to be in the new Necron Codex compared to the number that they've shown off. But I really hope that we're still missing one reveal for the Necron Codex. And it is Trazine the Infinite. Because we need him. We need the dream team back together. I want to play the Infinite the Divine out on the tabletop. I want these two like frustrating, grumpy old men in my Necron army going on adventures. That's all I've ever wanted. And it'll be weird to have this super cool, awesome new Oricon next to tiny little fine cast Trazine. That wasn't the only thing that Games Workshop showed off for Warhammer 40k though. In a surprising twist, they came out with, you're not gonna believe this guys, hold on. New Space Marine models. I know, right? It's super hard to believe, but I think we all assumed that all of the Space Marine Legions were going to get, or the Space Marine chapters were going to get their own kind of Black Templar treatment, getting a whole bunch of unique and interesting units for them specifically. I really appreciate that they gave the Primaris treatment to the Black Templar first, a chapter that kind of isn't real. It's not one of the first 18, like first founding chapters. It's not even one of the, I guess it is the most famous not first founding chapter. But literally, it's just the meme of the Black Templars, our zealous crusaders, has made them so popular. And they were so bad for all of 40k that they got first dibs on the Primaris treatment. And now it is time for the first legion, the Dark Angels. Death Wing Terminators, probably one of the scariest units in Warhammer 40k. A big brick of Death Wing Terminators backed up by some characters is an incredibly unstoppable force on the tabletop. And now they have some new miniatures. I adore the new Terminators. Every single Facebook, 40K Facebook group that I am in right now is Photoshopping these Terminators into their chapter specific colors to see how it looks. I really like these guys. I like the rivets on their legs. There's some very subtle changes between these guys and the Terminators that they've already showed off. And they're, it's just really good. They're actually somewhat simple. I don't actually know if they're simple. I think literally just the scale increase has given their decorations a little bit more room to exist because the old Deathwing Terminators are covered in stuff, but that same stuff just doesn't take up as much room. There are little incense burners that hang between their legs it really fills that space up on a smaller Terminator, but on these big guys, it actually looks somewhat reasonable. Their little knives, their little purity seals, and their broken sword with wings symbol and motif going on. I really, really like it. I like the little addition to assault shoulders that Games Workshop has been doing. Like if you have assault intercessors, you see that one of their shoulders has like a rim an extra rim on it. It's kind of like, I guess, medieval jousting armor. I just really, really like that little addition. I think the only thing missing on these guys is a little bit more going on on top of their heads or on their backs. Like that space just feels a little bit empty. And that's usually prime space, like prime real estate for a Terminator to have some fun and funky stuff. Like my Terminators have skulls and candles up there and it, it just, it's just a lovely little, it's like, it's literally because it's flat. It's a shelf to put your toys and your accessories. So I'm surprised they didn't throw a little something up there, but I think it still looks really good. And there's tons of aftermarket and STL stuff that you could throw up there to just to, just to give them a little bit more flavor. I like their classic shields. They're not, they're not the, the Crux Terminata symbol where it's kind of square and blocky. They are proper shields and they got swords, and they got their whacking sticks. I've never been a big fan of the whacking stick, but the swords look really, really good. I have been a little tempted, because I just bought a whole bunch of Terminators so that I could run the regular Terminators with their Storm Bolters and their Power Fists, but I was a little tempted for these guys, for my Black Templar Assault Terminators, because it's two very different things, and I'm going to need both of them in my army, but I'm going to hold out, because 
I can't imagine Games Workshop isn't doesn't have Assault Terminators right around the corner somehow. Maybe maybe if they come out with like Blood Angels, they'll have the Assault Terminators. It is weird that they're not they they currently are on the codex with the old kit, but the old kit looks really really old now. With these super cool Terminators out, and this box is not going to have the Thunder Hammers. Presumably, they didn't show it off in this article, and you don't put uh, Thunder Hammers on a Deathwing Terminators, so. Presumably this kit doesn't have it, and you can't have Assault Terminators without the Haminators. Like, you just it just isn't done. So I'm holding out that they're probably going to come out with some proper Assault Terminators in the not-too-distant future, and they will be glorious, and they will be mine. And speaking of the Dark Angels, they also got a named character in Asmodee. 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 I'm blue, Asmodee, Asmodee. <laughs> I don't know how to say the name, but it is a, a cool, spooky sounding name for a spooky chaplain. He is very cool. And I thought it was very funny on the live stream where they showed off all of the stuff that they very pointedly said, the smoke is optional, everyone. We know none of you like the smoke, so you don't have to glue it on. You can have a perfectly normal backpack. I actually really like the smoke. I think it's a lot of fun. It, it does a really good job of framing the miniature, but I definitely get it that it is monstrously silly. This guy is super fun. It kind of reminds me of the Black Templar, not the Marshal, the Castellan, where they took an old piece of lore and kind of one-to-one it. This guy isn't as one-to-one -one as that model was, but he doesn't feel like a normal space marine. He's a little sillier in his proportions. He's a little bit more weird and wacky. And I mean, he's almost completely covered in a cloak, which I really appreciate wearing a cloak over your armor because you want to keep your armor nice. Honestly, if he really should have a jacket on to keep the robe nice so that he'd have the jacket to protect the robe and the robe to protect the armor. And then, you know, he's probably got like a little pajamas underneath the armor <laughs> to keep him nice and comfy in the heat of battle. Ah, I love the big old purity seals hanging down, covering them all up. His Crozius and power sword that I'm sure he dual wields. He's got a baseball bat in one hand and a big old sword in the other. It's great. And the Iron Halo. Games are, oh, and the Iron Halo is really built into his backpack with like a little generator to build the invulnerable save. That is a really, really cool touch. I wish they did more with the Halos because um, Space Marines actually have never been that gothic. I know when the Primaris Marines came out, everyone was like, oh, Space Marines have completely lost their gothic flair. I I never looked at a rhino and thought that looks like a church. <laughs> it's just, it's not really how the Space Marines are, but every now and then they get a little something. And the, the Iron Halos are one of those things that just adds like a religious element that makes them feel a little bit more special than a lot of the science science fiction super soldiers we see all over the internet. I really like this guy. I think he's a lot of fun. He's a little bit tempting tempting because he is a chaplain and I collect chaplains and it does there's not that much super incredibly dark angels e stuff going on. Ooh, and some dark angels player is going to have to let me know what is hanging off his belt. He's got like a weird stick with a motorcycle, like gas, like grip and chainsaws and knives. It's the weirdest looking thing. And I don't know that much about the Dark Angel, so I don't know what that is. Maybe it's an agonizer. Although that's a Sisters of Battle thing. Wow, it's a really interesting little weapon he's got there. This guy is ready to rock and roll. <laughs> He is ready to find the fallen and bring them to justice. In fact, he's stabbing one in his silly little helmet, which presumably the head's still in there. Presumably, uh, it's it's a very it's a very fresh addition to his kill counts. I really like this model. I think he's a lot of fun. Games Workshop has been doing such a good job with Primaris characters. Right off the bat, they weren't. The first, I think, three or four Space Marine characters we got were so lame. But ever since then, some of the best miniatures that Games Workshop has made have been Primaris characters. For me, High Marshal Helbrecht and his little servitor who's wiping his sword is amazing. McFisty, Mephiston for the Blood Angels is one of the most gorgeous Space Marine models to ever exist. Iron Father Pharos, the Tech Marine in Gravis armor is incredible. 
and Asmodee or Asmodai or Asmodee or Asmodee. This guy is so much fun. Ah, it's I was super shocked because I also felt like Games Workshop was kind of low keying the whole event because they would already shown off so much stuff this year. And they were very specifically specific to point out that we're going to have a little something to reveal for every game. And I thought, OK, so we're probably going to get a couple of book expansions. We're probably going to get a tiny tease of Old World. We're going to get uh, just another mention that Adeptus uh, or uh, Legions Imperialis is going to come out. But no, we got new models for every single game that Games Workshop makes. And it was really, really cool. But you know what is also really, really cool? That's right, the terrain available on our Patreon. And this month, it is a doozy. We have the biggest pieces that we have ever made. A crane the size of a Titan, functional shipping containers with opening and closing doors, elevators, and stairs. We also make extra episodes of Eons of Battle where we take a look at our reviews miniatures and give some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. And for our top tier members, you get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines and you join my crusade against Sean because one day I'll beat him and it'll be glorious. And we are also starting a newsletter. So if you always want to stay up to date on the goings on at Eons of Battle, you can follow the link in the description to sign up for the newsletter. And in addition to news, we are also having monthly giveaways of miniatures and the terrain available on our Patreon. This month, it is the Spearhead box. Really bad name, but really cool box. So if you want a chance of getting that, you'll have to sign up for our newsletter. It was a surprisingly jam-packed week full of new miniatures from Games Workshop. A lot of it actually pretty darn tempting. I mean, I'm definitely I'm definitely getting Oricon the Diviner, but if they don't have a little crazy in the infinite for me to get also, I don't even know what's going on at Games Workshop. It's the most popular novel. Like they have the 50 book epic that is 30k, but this little buddy cop comedy book that came out for the Necrons is actually like a fan favorite, number one best-selling 40k book. It's really good. I like Necrons.